Hi everyone, this is Alan C98, and I'm here with my next video in my series of MQTT tutorials. In this video, we're going to make a complete project, and I'm calling my project DryOT, which is kind of a play on words between Dryer and IoT for Internet of Things, if you hadn't already figured that out. So in this first video, we're just going to cover an overview of the project and the assembly of all the hardware. So let me show you what the finished product looks like. Project DryOT is a Raspberry Pi Zero W with a Pi Maroni and Viro P hat, all mounted on, on my dryer. And so the idea is that we're hoping to pick up the vibrations in a dryer to determine if the dryer is still running. And we're also gonna monitor a couple of other things in the laundry room. So let's look at the project goals. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? We're trying to monitor the dryer to be able to tell if the dryer is running or not. And we want to be able to use the EnviroP at motion sensor to detect when the dryer is running. Well, why use the motion sensor and not something else like electrical current or some sort of controls in the dryer electronics? Well, first of all, this is very low cost. And the second is I want to keep it simple. I don't want to do anything that's going to potentially cause me to have to buy another dryer. The second goal is we want to monitor the temperature in the laundry room, and we can do that with the Enviro P hat. And the third thing we want to do is use the light sensors and be able to tell if anybody left the lights on in the laundry room. And that can help us save a little bit of electricity if we know that it's still on. And a future goal is to add a Raspberry Pi camera and try to use some sort of image processing so we can detect the estimated time remaining on the dryer cycle. Okay, so... How are we going to deliver this information to my family who needs to really know whether the dryer is running? Well, first option is we can give them an SSH login so they can log into the Pi, run a Python script, and monitor the sensors. Nah, I don't think that's going to work. I think we need something a little easier for everybody to use. So the second idea is to publish the data to MQTT and use apps on our phones or computers or whatever to monitor that data. We can have a little graph or something. That's a little better. The third idea is to publish the data to the online service adafruit.io so any family member can bring it up on a web browser, really anywhere, so we can have it on our phones. It's really good for those did I leave the dryer on moments when we're out. I think that's an even better idea. In fact, I might use a combination of two and three I mean, it's pretty easy to be able to just publish to a local MQTT server and also Adafruit.io at the same time. Now, some future goals include building a little dry OT display panel using something like an ESP8266, which is a little Arduino compatible Wi-Fi device, plus an LCD screen. It'd be useful to have a little device just sitting in the kitchen that could show us all this data, like temperature, whether or not the lights are on, whether the dryer's on, things like that. And the other thing we can do is set up an open source home automation hub, such as OpenHab or Home Assistant, to integrate the data into a more complete home automation solution. But we're going to keep it pretty simple for now and just go with standard MQTT data. So with that in mind, let's start the project assembly. As I said before, in this first video, we're just going to concentrate on assembling the project. We have some soldering to do, some 3D printing, and once we have everything together, the second video will cover the software setup, including Raspbian OS, installing the Pi Maroni Python scripts for the Enviro P at, and then getting it to all talk to MQTT. Okay, well, let's get started with the assembly. Okay, now I'm going to go over all the materials that you need to complete this project. So obviously the first thing that we need is the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now I was able to get this at Micro Center in the U.S. for actually $5 on sale. Normally they sell for $10, so that's a real bargain. And of course, you know, on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, we need to have the 40-pin header so we can attach the sensor board to it. Now, I ended up buying the bulk um, package of these 40-pin headers on Amazon. You can get them a lot cheaper than if you keep buying them individually. Um, so the next thing we have is our sensor board itself. 
This is a Pi Maroni Enviro P hat, so it's a smaller board that fits right over the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now the P hat, let me bring it a little closer, provides a barometer, temperature and humidity sensor. It has a light sensor and it has a motion sensor. We're going to use that to try to detect the vibration in the dryer to set, tell whether it's running or not. It also has some analog inputs which are um, very useful too, but we're not going to use those for this project. And of course, you know, it's backed up some by some very nice, easy to use Python libraries. And I still have to solder the header onto the P hat as well. So I'm going to be doing that. Now, in order to kind of hold this onto the dryer and mount it, um, I designed this very simple 3D printed plate to hold the Raspberry Pi Zero. So you can see here that there's these two holes. I ended up sizing it to fit these suction cups that I found at a craft store. So it's really easy. Um, you can just plug these suction cups in here and then it can stick to the dryer. And then of course, um, I use this hardware that I got to mount the Pi to the plate. And of course I bought this um, bulk hardware, this M2.5 sized hardware from Amazon so I can use it for these Raspberry Pi type of projects. Okay and also with this 3D printed plate I'll be sure to put this design in my GitHub repository so you can use it and print it out if you need if you would like to use it. Um, in addition to the Raspberry Pi itself we need to power it so I bought this 2.4 amp micro USB power supply from Micro Center for I believe it was seven dollars. We don't really need 2.4 amps, but that's um, more than enough for a Raspberry Pi, for the Pi Zero at least. That should be able to power a Pi 3 as well. Okay, and the last thing we need is not really for the project, but more for the setup, is I need to connect the Raspberry Pi to the monitor. And so I have this little um, mini HDMI adapter so I can hook it up to my monitor and do the software setup and programming, at least until I get the Wi-Fi going. And I have a little mini, or I'm sorry, micro USB adapter as well. So I'll use those for setup. But once we have the thing on the network, then we don't really need to connect it to a monitor or a keyboard. Okay, so that's everything we need for the project. So next thing I'm gonna do is start to solder the headers on to the Raspberry Pi and the P hat. Okay, now we're ready to solder the headers. We have to solder the headers on the Enviro P hat board and on the Raspberry Pi. Um, okay, so I can't claim to be an expert at soldering. You know, I'm more of a software guy than a hardware guy, but I, I kind of um, fake it. So bear with me while I try to do a reasonable soldering job here. And the first thing I always do when I'm putting these headers on is make sure that um, it's aligned properly. So you get the, the first couple of pins in and you want to make sure that it's nice and even. And then of course, you know, check out the solder joints. I usually have to use a magnifying glass to check this out. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit and, and crank on through all 40 pins. Okay, this is starting to look like I have everything. So this video, this demonstration here was basically a, a lesson in how not to solder. I kind of made all kinds of little messes here, bridges between pins and all kinds of good stuff. But again, I'm a software person, but when you're dealing with this kind of maker hobbyist equipment, um, it's usually good enough. Not anything I would want to put on a satellite or anything. Okay, well the next thing we're going to have to do is um, solder the Raspberry Pi header. Okay, now that we've um, tried to solder the Enviro P hat header, 
we're going to do something similar where you have to solder the 40 pin header on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now of course one way to save yourself the trouble of all this is you can buy the, the Raspberry Pi Zero WH which has the header pre-soldered and that if you're not very skilled at soldering, which I'm not very good, um, you can definitely save yourself the time and effort by paying a few extra dollars and getting the one with the pre-soldered header. And I know there's also a company, um, it could be Pimeroni, that makes a little header that you can just kind of hammer on there as well. It kind of force fits. But I'm gonna kind of muddle through this and do the best I can without messing it up. Um, I've done quite a few without really ruining any so far. They all seem to work, so I'm just gonna keep cranking through this and see how it turns out. Okay, and with that, it looks like I have it. Um, I really feel like I've done better soldering jobs with these other Raspberry Pis I've done, but I think this is gonna do the job. The next thing we have to do is start the assembly. And to do that, I'm gonna print out the little 3D printed um, Raspberry Pi mount that I made. So this is the Raspberry Pi mount, the Pi Zero mount that I made in SketchUp. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get that into the 3D printer software. I use this software called Matter Control. So I designed it in SketchUp and I use Matter Control to print it to the 3D printer. So let's get started in printing this out. Okay, now that our 3D print is finished, take a look at it here. Seems to look like it came out pretty good. So the last part of this video is the final assembly. As you see, we've um, soldered the header onto the Enviro P hat. We've soldered the header somewhat onto the Raspberry Pi Zero. And we have all of our parts, and so now we're going to assemble everything. The first thing we need to do is attach the Raspberry Pi to this 3D printed plate. Okay, now let's tighten it up a little bit. Don't do it too much because the 3D printed plastic is not that sturdy. Okay, now we should be able to mount the Raspberry Pi. Should just fit right over there. Um, the holes aren't perfectly spaced to my 3D printed design, but it actually fits pretty well and it's actually pretty sturdy. You know, it's not going anywhere right now. Um, before we do anything else, why don't we um, put these suction cups on. These things just pop right in takes a little bit of effort to get it at the right angle, but they stay in there once you have it in. 
And um, I didn't really mention which suction cups I have. And let me show you the package real quick. Um, I got them at Micro, or not at Micro Center. Got everything else at Micro Center. I got these at Michael's Crafts in the US. And it's a little pack of these um, one pound suction cups. Came in a pack of four. And in case the SKU would be helpful, there's the SKU if you want to try to find something similar. But I think they're about you know, one and a half inches or just about 30 uh, millimeters across. And I don't know if I really know the measurement of this in here, but um, it just fits perfectly with my design. Okay, so next step here is I just have these little screws, or not screws, little um, spacers that I can use to help hold the Raspberry Pi in place. It's probably not necessary. Uh, I think everything's going to stay put, you know, we're not going to be um, subjecting it into to any real, really harsh um, movement or anything. Dryer vibration is what we're hoping to pick up, but uh, I don't think it's going to knock anything loose. So let me get those on there. Right now they're just finger tight, but I'm going to have to go back with a little wrench or pliers and tighten them up. Okay, so the last thing is get the Enviro P hat. You have to make sure you line it up correctly on the 40 pin header. You don't want to bend anything or get it misaligned. It's there nice and snug. So that's our Enviro P hat. So we have everything pretty much ready to go. And then of course, you know, we have the power supply. Um, that's power. That's the USB and that's the micro or mini HDMI. So the power will go in here. Um, just for setup only, I'm going to put my mini or micro USB adapter here so I can use my little um, wireless keyboard mouse adapter so we can do the setup. But once it's set up, I'm not going to use this. And same goes with this, the HDMI adapter. This is for setup only. And then the last thing we need is just the um, SD card micro SD card. And of course I don't have the Raspbian OS loaded yet, but I just want to show you, you know, where all the parts go. So that just goes there. Okay, so that's our fully assembled unit all ready um, for software setup. So in the next video, we're actually going to install the Raspbian OS, install all the libraries we need, connect it to the network and get all the software up and running so that we can actually get this project going. Okay, so that's all I have for this video. So stay tuned for the next video where we'll continue with the software setup.